Hi, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon. I work here in the UK in London. And some of you may already know that I have coronavirus and I've been uh, down with coronavirus for a couple of weeks now. So the first thing I want to say is uh, sorry to all my patients who I've had to cancel all the operations and clinics I've had to miss. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so I've got it. I've had my headaches, my fevers and chills and muscle aches and just feeling really tired and all the time. But the thing I did notice is that I've lost my sense of smell. And because of that, I, I can't taste anything. It seems a bit weird because uh, taste comes from three different sort of or more than three different types of cranial nerves at the back of our throat. Sense of smell comes from something known as the olfactory nerve that comes down and comes about here. Because most of our appreciation for food comes from our sense of smell, I can taste things but we don't really get an awful lot of sensation from our taste fibres. And because I've lost my sense of smell, I can eat things that previously I wasn't able to eat. For example, I can get this onion, I can cut it down into little pieces. So I've got a bit of onion there and I can just it tastes a bit like a, an apple or well, it doesn't taste like anything it just tastes like I'm biting on an apple with no taste if I got a lime like this even with the rind on I can taste the sourness but not an awful lot else but the point is I can only taste now I can't smell anything before there was no way I could eat an onion like that like it would be impossible for me but now I can and luckily because my wife has also lost a sense of smell I can eat onions without uh, too much of a backlash um, oh yes I can also prove that I, I've lost my sense of smell by two different ways if you watch to the end of the video I'll show you um, I'll prove to my family that I can definitely have lost my sense of smell but I also proved to you by doing a test as well so the first thing I did when I realized I lost my sense of smell is to try and work out why I've lost my sense of smell. Is it because just my nose is very blocked and so air couldn't get up to my olfactory nerve that comes right to the top of my nose here? Or is it actually that the nerve has been damaged from coronavirus? So the first thing I did was to get something called uh, Sterimar and squeeze it up my nose. I'm not going to do it now because it'll just look ridiculous. And I used uh, like a Sudafed or an Otravine spray just to open my nose as much as possible so that when I sniff it, I should be able to sniff some, uh, smell something. Uh, and I tried smelling things and I, I couldn't smell anything. So then I thought I knew that it wasn't a conductive problem, but a sensory neural problem. So it's not something that stopping my air from getting to the nerve, which is called a conductive problem, the actual nerve is damaged. It doesn't matter how clear my nose is, it's, it's not gonna make a difference. It's actually the nerve that's the issue. Now I know after coronavirus, when people lose their sense of smell or anosmia, their sense of smell comes back slowly over the next few weeks or months later on. But there is a way or lots of things you can do to try and speed up that process route improve your recovery. So the main thing what people can do at home to try and improve their sense of smell and try and get it back again is to do something called olfactory training, which basically means train your sense of smell to come back again. And the idea is that you expose yourself to lots of smells and you keep sniffing them and trying to remember what that smell was like. Even if you can't smell anything at all, just keep going, keep trying to sniff something, trying to smell what actually you have in your hand. So as, as many of you know, I'm Indian, so I've got uh, lots of spices in my house because I can even cook Indian food. Um, I'm down to my last kilo of cumin because I eat a lot of that stuff. And I can't smell any jira at all. And there's cardamom. And I, <laughs> I think you're meant to take a very small sort of sniff, like a tiny sniff, because if you sniff too deeply like this, you set off some of the other nerves in the back of your throat. But actually, I want to feel like I can smell something. So I, I do take a big sniff. It's probably the wrong thing to do. And if you want to get proper olfactory training, I think you should look on the Absent website or the Fifth Scent website. And there are also some of my friends in London who deal with a lot of uh, anosmia and have done prior to the coronavirus uh, crisis. So Simon Gain, Claire Hopkins, both of them are excellent at dealing with this sort of thing. So, so speak to them. And they have videos as well on YouTube. So what I'd like you to do is expose yourself to lots of smells as often as you can, particularly those smells which you have strong memories for. So cloves, rose, lemon, I think there are a few others that the, uh, the original research is done on. But you can use anything really, anything that you have a strong memory for. It, you may not smell anything which is fine, but just keep going because it's really important that you keep trying, keep trying to jog your memory sense that uh, you can actually smell it. And apparently that improves or speeds up that process of recovery. Now, if you really want to know if you have an osmia or not, you need to do a, a smell identification test. And on each page, you have a little scratch pad at the bottom and four choices to choose from. And so you're meant to give it a little scratch like this. And 
And you meant to, I meant to choose now between petrol, pizza, peanuts or lilac. And I can't smell any of them. So I don't know what to go for. So I'm just going to go with pizza. I just like the sound of it. And then I'll do the next one. Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't smell like any of these things. <laughs> Maybe I'm making it up. Anyway, I'll do this test now. I'll finish all four booklets that you're given. There are 40 questions to finish and then I'll give you the result. So after all that, after all 40 questions, I got 12, which means although I thought I could smell some of the things, I, I can't, I'm, I'm making it up, it's all in my head. So um, I have no sense of smell at all, which is probably why I could eat that, uh, that onion I had earlier. So it's all very embarrassing. And because of that, there are certain things I have to be careful about because I can't smell anything. And it's really important we forget how important smell is. I think the most important thing is that you need to get yourself a smoke alarm. Yesterday when I was cooking, the smoke alarm went off twice because I didn't smell the smoke coming out of the grill. And you only notice it later when you, you can't breathe. So um, get a working smoke alarm and uh, make sure it's got the batteries in because you'll be in real trouble if the house is filling up with smoke and you, you can't smell the actual smoke. The next thing is that you also need a gas leak alarm as well, something that actually makes noise. Uh, remember, gas is odourless, you can't smell it at all. But what we do is we put a little uh, smell into gas so you can smell it. But if you can't smell, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get a warning sign of that smell of gas inside the house. So make sure you get a gas alarm as well. The same thing when you're using bleach or other cleaning products, when you're cleaning the bathroom or something. Uh, it can be a little bit overpowering. You can feel a bit dizzy if you, if you put your head into lots of bleach vapor. Just be careful of that. Uh, make sure you, you're well ventilated rooms when you're cleaning up because it can make you feel a bit heady. Now it's really, really important that you remember that you can't smell if the food that you're eating has gone off or not. It could be completely rotten and you could eat it without really realizing it. So make sure you look very carefully at the sell-by date or the expiry date on all the food that you get. And if anything may look a bit off, just throw it in the bin. I know I hate wa uh, food waste as well, but just get rid of it because it's not worth getting yourself sick for. It's also very easy when you're cooking to overdo the, the salt and, and the sugar as well, because those are the things that you can taste and you can easily overdo it because you can't taste anything else. And it's probably not a good idea to eat loads and loads of salt or all loads and loads of sugar. So just, just be a little bit more careful with that. You must also remember to eat properly as well. Make sure you get three meals a day because when you can't taste food, you don't have any enjoyment of food, you tend not to eat as much. If you don't eat as much, you start losing weight. So do carry on eating, make sure you get proper portions and eat the right amount of food so you stay healthy. And there's another thing you should be careful of, particularly men who live alone, uh, any man who lives alone uh, in his own flat or apartment. After a couple of weeks, we end up living like savages. So just make sure you clean yourself properly. Make sure that uh, you keep the house clean as well. Keep the place ventilated. You easily forget that if you can't smell anything, you'll be in real trouble if anyone did come around to the house. So there are a number of other things which I think might improve my sense of smell, but these have no medical basis at all. There's no evidence for any of this at all, but I just thought I'd let you know what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is cleaning my nose frequently with Sterimar, which will help me keep my nose clean, stop it from being blocked in any way. And on top of that, I'm using some Flixinase nasal spray or Pyrenase. Now I use Pyrenase sometimes if I've got hay fever. And so I'm going to use it to try and unblock my nose as much as possible to give myself the best possible chance to get smells to come into my nose. Now I know that there's some evidence out there about using steroids uh, like prednisolone or something like that to try and improve your sense of smell. But I've only just lost my sense of smell in the last week. And I think most people are saying, wait at least um, I think two to four weeks before considering that and go and speak to your doctor about that. So the main reason for that is that oral steroids have an awful lot of side effects and uh, problems and complications associated with it. So I'd only take those steroids if I felt that they would really help me. As far as I know, there's no real evidence that it makes any difference. And most people with coronavirus get their sense of smell back anyway without any intervention. So personally, I'm not going to take steroids. I'm just going to wait to see what happens. Now, I did say at the start of this video that I would prove to my family who live, now live in Australia and New Zealand that uh, I really do have anosmia. Now, the way I can prove it to them is that they know that I can't eat um, tomatoes. Every time I smell tomatoes, even if they're in the house, I gag and I, and I want to throw up. Well, here's some tomato. I could eat it. I mean, for years I thought it was a psychological thing. I remember in nursery, some teacher tried to force feed it to me and I vomited all over her. Although I don't like the thought of it. <laughs> I could eat it, it doesn't make me gag or make me want to throw up straight away. So that's amazing. Um, the other things which I've learnt to eat so things that you should try, for example, uh, I don't know, you could try anything you like to try and encourage your sense of smell to come back. They're all very good. 
very important training. And also thank you to all the people who felt sorry for us and gave us nice chocolates and things while we were not feeling very well. So thank you very much for watching.